Hey guys, Jake Quincy here, and I'm giving you my YCS Remote Duel deck profile. I played Vanquish Soul. I actually like the deck. I picked it up. I figured this deck's quite cool. It's nice with what it does. And as I played the tournament, I realized how the deck should actually be played. So throughout the video, I'll be mentioning the cards I played, the reasoning behind them, and also the way the deck should be played moving forward. I do think the cards that I'm playing and the tech choices I'm playing should belong in the deck list moving forward because it adds consistency and it also can give you power. Now, I hope you enjoy this type of video and this type of content. I would appreciate if you click that like button, the subscribe button, and even if you actually just don't like the deck profile or if you do like the deck profile and have your own spin on it, just let me know in the comments what you think. I will check in the comments. I'm curious to what you think on how this deck should be played because right now it hasn't got like a final, like a final version of the deck, like other decks right now, like a finalized version. However, it is crushing in America, like the regionals in America, it's crushing. But it, in Europe, it's not really having a huge, like, it's not doing quite well over here, basically. So, guys, let me know what you think to the video in terms of the deck list. And without further ado, let's get straight into this profile. Okay, so basically, we're going to be playing Free Raisin, Free Mad Love. Three Borger and two Caesar. You have to play these six and even these nine. This nine is mandatory. You can't play two Mad Love. You can't play two Borger. It, it's terrible playing two of these because you need a way to normal summon. You need to be physically be able to commit cards to the board. Now, if you just open this card and with a hand traps, it's not terrible because you can search the book immune to your hand and then you can be able to bounce amongst your opponent controls. But and also you'll be able to. Um, use the hand traps in your opponent's turn. So it's not terrible on its own. You want to max out on this. Raisin is the best one, of course, because it just gets your engine completely going. I, I really like Borger. The fact that you can just keep drawing cards when you're playing multiple hand traps, it just controls the game state. And it can add a lot of pressure as well. It puts your opponent on a two turn clock. The reason why is it's got 2500 attack, and if you start burning them 1500 each time, so if this attacks twice and burns twice, it's 8k. Very rarely that will happen, but the burning for game does happen. I had a feature match I written one over the weekend. I'll link it in the description below. I actually won game one because I basically did that. Okay, then we have um, Caesar Valius. Now, you can't really play one. You kind of want to play two because later in the game, you're going to be searching one whilst you have one on the board and you're going to start revealing this because your Earths won't really be in hand unless you have Cashier of Fenrir. So, other than that, this is the 11 you should definitely be playing. I wouldn't be playing the Earth level 4. doesn't really do much on its own, apart from committing a body to the board to let, let you make rock, then reveal some in this. But I'm not a huge fan. Okay, so this this, this 11 is just non-negotiable. You have to play this 11. Okay, so next up is the Hand Traps. So Triple Ash is, is essential. It's a fire. Fires work really well in your hand. It gives you the best effects for the Vanquish Soul monsters. You just and Ash Blossom just is other than Raisin is one of the best fires for the deck. Then we have Triple Ghost Spell. Now you're not really playing many Earths. This is one of the best Earths in the game, considering looking at the format. A lot of tournaments have a high count of branded players, and also they have a high count of Runic decks. These cards just shut off the Runic engine. Uh, this will stop shut off the Hugin and the Fountain, but later on it will turn off the Fountain, and so will the Ghost Spell. These cards are essential. They are pretty nice as well. So if you have like Fenrir or if you have a way to summon Borger, you can then normal summon one of these and make Baron. I do play Baron in my extra deck. I'll show the extra deck shortly. Then we have the Bestial Package. Now, the Bestial Package is essential. The reason why it's essential, Free Magma is 100% correct for this deck. There's, there's, a huge reason behind it, and, and not many of you will realize why. This card lets you search either a fire, earth, or dark. And it's inc it's important to do so, because if you start, you, you summon this, obviously it's a dark, it's going to let you draw cards, you can summon it in your turn, and then you can search whatever you need for the follow for your opponent's turn. And if you go second, you can summon it in your opponent's turn, and then you can search the attribute you need. So, this is essential, you have to play three of these. The Juris Worm is the dark that we're going to be searching from this. The Valius is the earth we're going to be searching for this because this is a dragon, so you can search this. And then the fire dragon we're searching just came off the ban list is Blaster. Now, Blaster's great. For level 7, this will come up 
a lot of your monsters are flyers. You can banish flyers from the grave to summon it. So you can make um, Baron much easier. And you can obviously overlay into a Rise Heart. This card is just very good for the deck. Also, later game, once you've got a controlled game state and you've dealt quite a bit of damage, you can just send this and another fire from your hand to destroy a card in the field. Th this card is solid. The cool thing as well is if you special summon it from its effect, and the opponent's end phase, this goes back to your hand, so you've got a fire ready in your hand to go. So th this, this is just 100%. This is just non-negotiable. You have to play all these cards so far that I've shown. Then we have Kastira Fenrir. Fenrir is nice. It applies a lot of pressure. Does a lot of damage. It's an earth. It's one of the best earths for the deck. It does conflict with magma when you go second. But realistically and statistically, you shouldn't be opening magma and this consistently. You should be only drawing one or the other. Then we have Rise Heart. You just have to play Rise Heart as a five, which you can search from this, or you can search an earth. It's nice. The thing I like about this deck is you can control which attributes you add based on the hand that you have. So you can sculpt your own hand. So it's pretty nice. Then I decided to play two Curry Kara. Now, the reason why I played two is just to fit in talents. I wanted to play three. I do side the third. This card is surprisingly good, and I can't see myself not wanting to play three if I continue playing this deck. It, it adds a lot of value. It's terrible going first, though. And I started to figure out that I should start going second with this deck. There's cards in my side deck as well, which add value to this deck, make going, you going second, and you can OTK very easily. Next, we have the spells. So we, I went with double talents. This is a 41 card deck list. And originally, it was free Kurikara as the, so the 40th, card was the Kurikara, but I took the Kurikara out and I played two talents and two Kurikara. I prefer this, I like talents, I actually think you need three talents in this deck, you want to open it. This card is a, a god card in the game right now, this card literally says you win the game. Um, when you go first and when you go second, so you should definitely play three of these. Then I went with one continue, I don't like two, it adds to your bad hands, it doesn't really achieve much. Um, like later on in the game, you should have already, already controlled the game later on anyway, so you should be winning. You don't need a second one. And one Foolish Braille, the Dust Devil. This card is solid. Really nice to control the board. You Once you um, go first and you have this, it's nice. When you go second, though, it doesn't really... I mean, it's okay. It's okay. When you go second, I'm finding myself searching continue just to extend the game. Um, I do think this deck is a go second deck, thinking about it more. Um, so you might want to start cutting this and just play one of these moving forward. Or entirely, if you play go second list, you could actually cut both of them, not search for Mad Love, because you don't want to be opening these, you'd be rather opening monsters which add value to your attributes uh, to then benefit from the monsters that you're going to be resolving with their effects. Then we have one of the, the best spells in the game currently, apart from talent, so this is, this is insane, but I, I do think Stake Your Soul is really strong. You can splash this in many decks. And I think the way this deck should be played right now is you're splashing a small engine with free stake your soul in your deck list. Um, so I think you should be playing like a 10 Vanquish Soul engine, very similar to like Adventure, but with Vanquish Soul. So I reckon we're going to start seeing that trend moving forward, um, even though we're not seeing it right now. Then I went with two Pot of Desires. Prosperity doesn't fit right with me in this deck list because you're, it conflicts with you drawing cards. And it's not nice. Yes, there are free prosperity compared to desires. However, the amount of times you're going to have prosperity and you can't resolve Borger isn't nice. Yes, prosperity, prosperity lets you dig six cards. And yes, it does let you find a raisin much um, like more consistently. I do prefer desires. You're not really bothered about what cards you banish. You are drawing two. You are going to be drawing to six when you go first and drawing to seven when you go second. Gives you more attributes on your hand. It's nice. If your deck list is super consistent, you benefit more from this. Really like desires in the deck list. Um, I would play this for sure. Um, Prosp, I'm not a huge fan of in this deck, and especially if you want to play go second version moving forward with this deck list. Prosp isn't the best because you can't kill them in that turn because you, they take half the damage. So desires is just way better. And then of course reinforcements to the army. It's the fourth raisin essential. You have to play this card. And then the traps is just triple. There only can be one. 
I like this card. I like what it does. It's one of the best floodgates right now, outside of Goza match, that is. I do think this deck, though, should actually play Summer Limit over there when you can be one. Because when you go first, it's very strong. It deals with a lot. I mean, even Summer Limit probably should be sided, like to be, to be more precise. Definitely can see myself playing free Summer Limit in the, in the side deck. I actually would probably rather play more spells, like maybe triple three of these, um, two Frost, and one Dark Ruler rather than these. Um, but then again, I do like what this does when you go first. Going second, it's not great. It can be good, though, if your opponent's got a big board. Okay, so that's 41. That's the main deck. Next is the extra deck. So the extra deck, I built it this way within the mind of having there only can be one in the field. So we're starting with Triple Rock of the Vanquisher. I've been playing two for a while. I decided just to try out three for the YCS. Definitely incorrect. You don't need three of these cards. This is just, you don't need three. If you play Prosperity, I bet you find yourself always banishing the, the one copy from it. You just don't need three. You're, I mean, most games you will make one and then probably the other amount of games that you play you're making a second one but i rarely doubt the third one is ever coming up so i wouldn't play free moving forward then for the other links we have security dragon i like this i like this better than cerberus you don't have to discard a card yes you won't be able to draw um because obviously with this over the cerberus but this is nice it bounces it doesn't destroy as well that, that, that works quite well you then have phoenix phoenix is nice as well um and i then play um, Unicorn. Now the reason why I like playing this and then um, Unicorn because you can link climb. So I just I built this deck to link climb into access code as well within the mind of having there only can be one. So if you had Cerberus obviously you can't link climb into links because you already control a fiend so you can go like Cerberus then, then Unicorn then to access code talker and then you've got an 8300 attack access code talker which should be winning the game at that point. So yeah I built this like this just with their only one in mind. Would I do this moving forward? I think so still. Um, but then I mean, yeah, I mean it, it comes up especially when you have continue, when you search continue flow. So yeah, it's nice. Um Black Plus Soldier. Um this card will come up. It's very nice. It's hard to get rid of when you use level seven. Your opponent's gonna struggle with this on the board, especially if you boost the attack to 4500. And the ability just to be able to attack and just banish cards is just nice as well. So yeah, I, I like this card. Then for the Synchros, I'm playing Baron. You have to play Baron in this deck. Not many lists are playing it. It's a very good controlling card, especially if you've got a weak hand. Um, plays quite well when you, nice when you go second. Then I'm playing Chaos Angel. You have to play this card if you're playing the Bestials. Mad Love and Abistial makes this. This will come up. It's a big attack as well. Um, you just have to include it, especially if you're playing talents in your deck list as well. Easier to make. Then we've got Baguska, Exciton Knight, and I went with 101 um, Honor Arc. Now, the reason why I played this is it's going to be nice majority of the time when I decide to make it against most decks. The ability just to detach to attach a monster to it as a material, and then I can attack and then make a Zeus on top of it with two materials now. Um, so I'm clearing the problem and then I'm making a Zeus for the opponent's follow-up. So I do think you should play this. It's really nice. Excite on Knight is nice as well because you can just go Excite on pop blow up the board and then go Zeus. But this this is nice if you want to suck up a monster. Um, then I play the Zeus and then I play the Arise Heart. The Arise Heart comes up, especially when you go Talent or when, when your opponent uses the Shangri-La in, in, in your standby. So you can go Fenrir or any of your Hashira monsters to make this. I kind of want to play Shangri in the in the extra deck. I probably would take out this for it, so I can just overlay two guys for it, then overlay into this, so then I have three materials underneath it, so banish. Um, and then I can attack, attach your material, and then I can make a Zeus on top of it. So that will come up. So I think I should play Shangri in this deck. I like the extra deck. I like the uh, everything that it can, it can do. I just don't like three of these. You don't need three at all. The format's not slow enough for, to warrant three, is basically what I'm saying. Then the side deck. You've got Triple Eradicator. Magma and Borga are 2500 and obviously um, the other bestial monster. It's nice, great card, broken, 
Should have been at one a long time ago, even banned. It's bannable, a bannable card. I can't believe we're talking about it now to be banned. It should have been banned quite a long time ago. Then, um, evenly matched. Don't like it. Not a huge fan. Um, there was Lions for me to OTK, and I just opted to do this because it's much safer. Um, when I had it in my hand, I just would rather play a go second version without this and just go for the OTK line. Then I played Triple Dark Ruler. It's okay. It's all right. Again, I'd rather go with the OTK version, which I'll get, go into in a second. Then I've got Triple Drawbird. Yeah, it's nice. It's very nice going second against the Runic decks. It does, they do struggle against it, and then you can just basically turn them off for that turn, and then you go for game. Would, he put it, would I put it in going first? Probably not, because it doesn't add value to your deck. But going second, you're going to play it, and then you're going to draw to five anyway because once you've used it. So because you're drawing that additional card and you're to start of your turn going when you go second, it, it makes sense to play this in the side. It is nice when I play it moving forward, probably. I think you're kind of forced to have to, you have to play it. Okay, and then for the last three cards, we've got the third Curry Kara. Definitely going to play in the main. I've got the Pankratops. I'm going to put this in the main deck. And then I've got Alpha Master of Beast. I'm going to put three of these in the main with this and three of these. I'm going to play a pure go second deck with Talents. I might be able to fit Frost in there. I'm not really sure if I can yet. Um, and then I'm just going to go for like a complete OTK version. You could even play Super Poly if you wanted to. So you can have three of these, three Super Poly, the Pankratops, the free Kurikara, and then you've got your engine. So even if you don't draw the cards that you need, you're going to have a lot of powerful monsters to be able to break your opponent's board and then just take over the game. Guys, I hope you like this video. I hope it's informative. I hope it helps you for Euros this weekend and for your national championships. Would appreciate a subscribe from yourself and moving forward for more videos like this. Let me know what you think. Good luck in your tournaments. Let me know how you do. And with that, Jake Quincy signing out.